We've got a couple of new features in the Grass Valley browser. First one is an option to find duplicate files. So here I've got a bunch of clips which I've registered into the library. And I'm going to go up to edit and then choose search duplicate files. You've got the option here to search for the exact match, which like it says might take some time, or you can just do a library search where it matches the name and the size and the date it was modified, which is the one I use most of the time. You can obviously decide where you're going to search, but all I'm going to really do here is click on search and make it look through the entire catalog. And immediately it's come up with a bunch of duplicate clips, which you can see here. Most of these filmed with my little GH4, some in log mode, which is why they're a bit flat, and some not in log mode. Where are they? Well, I could click on any of them, and over here it will actually tell me where the clip is. Or if I just pop this into a different view, like the details view here, I can actually bring up the file path, just put it near the front. And you can see here, for example, I've got that clip of the countryside is on the D drive, and it's also in another folder on the D drive. Having found the duplicates, now what I can do is decide I don't want some of them. For example, I've got these files, which are in this folder called Speed Test, and these files, which are exactly the same thing, in a folder called Scotland in my demonstration drive. So I'm just manually now selecting all the ones which are in the Scotland folder. Right click and say Move to Recycle Bin, or I could have just pressed the Delete key. And what that's going to do is it's going to take those duplicate clips and put them into the recycle bin. This puts them into the recycle bin inside of the browser. It's not put them into the recycle bin inside of the computer. So if I go to that particular folder that I was looking at, which was under the D drive demo clips Scotland, those clips are still there. They haven't been deleted. So I put them into the browser's recycle bin. If I actually want to get rid of them actually off the computer, I'd go to the browser recycle bin right click and say delete all files. It's now moved all those files into the Windows recycle bin and if I actually want to delete them from good I've got to come over here and right click and say empty bin and that will get rid of them completely. Mainly it's got this nice function which lets you search for duplicate clips and you can see these clips here these are ones I had no idea I had twice on the same computer because I've got loads of clips lying around, loads of hard drive space, get a bit lost as to what's there. Well, all this lot's on there twice. I really, really don't need it twice, which is a nice, useful feature. Another new feature in browser is this preview quality. Now, I've got a very good computer. It can quite happily cope with 4K and HD, but it doesn't cope very well with formats like red files, 6K red files, this sort of thing. Playback resolution here will let you drop the quality so maybe you can play it back on a computer that can't cope with the full quality. This reduced playback resolution feature is in EDIUS as well, but in EDIUS it's only in the workgroup version. In the browser, the reduced playback resolution is in both the pro and the workgroup version. So you'll have this regardless of which version of EDIUS that you've got. Another new feature is to do with image sequences. So let's go to a little folder here where I've got some animations that I've rendered out of a 3D program and I'm going to register those to the library. As it stands, it's about 150 frames of an animation, and there's not a lot I can do about it when it's just a bunch of files on the hard drive. So what I've got to do is register it to the library. I'm going to register it and create a catalog just to make it easier to find. And here you can see I've got that same set of images. What I'm going to do is select the lot, so just Control and A, and then right click and say Set as Still Sequence and it converts all those images into a video file. It actually hasn't made them into a video file. There's still a bunch of images, but inside the browser, they're seen as a video clip. So you can see I've pressed the play button now, and I can see my little animation of my little throbbing warp thing in space. So that's still a bunch of still images. It's not made it into a video clip. It hasn't converted it. It's just inside of the browser, you see it as a video clip. And then if I was to go into EDIUS and go to the source browser, of course my catalogue turns up there and I can bring it in as a video clip from the browser. I can right click on it and cancel the sequence to put it back to a bunch of still images if I want to. Don't want to do that. The only other important question is looking at this, what is the frame rate? Now, I've got a bunch of still images, how does it decide whether they should be playing at 25, 30, whatever frame rate? It's over here in the properties of the clip. So you see it's automatically set it to 24. I want to be running this at 25, so I'm going to click on that, and now I'm running this at 25 frames a second. Probably notice as I change the frame rate here, the actual duration's changing. 
because you know if you're running less frames a second it gets longer it should be a six second animation at 25 frames a second it's obviously three second animation at 50 now I loaded the clip into EDIUS before I changed the frame rate in the browser so what does EDIUS think the frame rate should be well let's right click and choose properties and oh it thinks the frame rate's 24 frames a second because that's what it was when it brought it in so what I really want to do here is I'm going to change that to be 25 and the easiest way if I've already imported it to EDIUS is to right click go to properties choose frame rate stick 25 it says well now you're changing the frame rate it's going to get shorter do you really want to do that yep and now I'm running at 25 frames a second of course it would have been better if I'd set the frame rate before I brought it into EDIUS but if you don't that's the way to sort it out I'm going to go back to the source browser right click on the catalog and say refresh and then bring it in again because in doing so that should have taken account of the fact that I changed the frame rate in the browser let's have a look if it worked yep it did that's just a nice little thing you're doing lots of animations it's a nice way of bringing in lots of still images the other thing I tend to do if I bring a clip into EDIUS like this is I tend to convert it directly into a video clip because still image sequences don't play back so well in EDIUS this one as you can see is working really nicely but this is only 1280 by 720 so you might have a more complicated and a longer still image sequence I'd much prefer to change it into a video clip obviously you could just stick it on the timeline and export it but I find the simplest thing to do especially if you've got lots of image sequences is to make sure it's up in the bin it's not in the bin at the moment because I went straight from the source browser to the timeline but I can just right click and say add it to the bin once it's in the bin you can right click on it and say convert file decide where it's going to go give it a name from this drop down here you can choose the quality of the final file so you haven't got that many options on what kind of file you can make here which you would do if you were printing to file but I find there's enough here. I tend to go either for um, an HQ online quality AVI file or an HQX online file, depending on whether I want 8-bit or 10-bit, and then save. And what that does is it converts that image sequence into a video. And so I like to do that for image sequences because they work better afterwards. The nice thing about bunging them up into the bin here is if you've got 50 image sequences, you can just select the lot and convert them to AVI files all in the bin rather than having to shut them on the timeline and do them one at a time. So that convert thing, that convert thing's actually been in EDIUS for donkey's years, but it's very useful, especially I find for image sequences. So in this case, I don't really need it because it's managing to cope with it. Let's do another one. Let's just register this one into the library. So it's now gone into the library somewhere. It's not in a catalog. I'm just going to have to find it. Oh, there it is. Let me just select all of my space warpy effect shots. Right click, set as image sequence. What's the frame rate? Should be 25. Try playing that one back. Yep, still works. Let's bring that one in. So let's go to the browser. I've got to find it in there. Would have been easier if I'd made up a catalog. Let's see, what was it called? War New Stars or something like that. Okay, well, let's do it very simply. Let's go to the search function and type in war. Oh, there it is. Right click, add it to the bin. Look in the bin. There we are. Right click on that. Choose convert. Now I've got a video clip. Of course, you don't have to do it that way. You can always just come into EDIUS, right click, add file, find the image sequence, and just click on the first shot and choose this thing, sequence clip. If you've got a bunch of stills with numbers after them, it'll put them in that order and bring it in as a video file. And it's achieved exactly the same thing as I just did through the browser. Then of course I could right click and then convert that to a file if I wanted to. The actual frame rate that this comes in at is the frame rate of your project. So I'm in a 25 frames a second project. And if I look at the properties of the clip, it is 25 frames a second for the properties of the clip. That works just as well as bringing it through the browser. The idea is that thing in the browser is helpful if you're browsing things with lots of image sequences. On top of these things, Grass Valley have added some ports for some new formats, which you can see listed here. This includes things like GPS data in GPX files and support for some new raw formats. 
The other recent news is that the Edius jump grade has been extended. It was set to end at the end of April, and this has been extended to the end of July. So if you've got a copy of Edius 6.5 or earlier, or Edius Neo, you can upgrade to the full version of Edius Pro 8 and save yourself about £100 in the process. If you want to know more about Edius, visit our website www.dvc.uk.com or email us sales at dvc.uk.com or telephone us on 01273 205 700. And of course, don't forget to like this video or subscribe to our YouTube channel to see more videos in the future. You can also get news and updates by visiting our Facebook page. See you when the next Edius update comes out.